In the headlines, security operatives in Niger State neutralize 100 bandits, repel attack on police station. Maiduguri residents grown high cost of running generators. Drama as ex CBN governor takes oath of office as governor of Anambra. <laughs> Point four magnitude quake shakes eastern Japan, prompting tsunami warning. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now the news in full. Joint security operatives comprising the Nigerian Army, the police, and members of the Niger State Vigilante Corps have neutralized over 100 bandits and repelled attempted attack on a police division in Bangui, the headquarters of Mariga local government area of Niger State, by bandits. Chief Press Secretary to the Niger State Governor, Abubakar Bello, Mary Berge, confirmed the attack. The governor commended the joint security operatives for their gallantry in repelling the attack and killing scores of bandits and commiserated with the family of an inspector who lost his life during the gun duel. The state commissioner for local government, chieftaincy affairs and internal security, Emmanuel Umar, said over 100 bandits were neutralized while 50 motorcycles were recovered during the operation. Pensioners in Edo State take to the streets to protest non-payment of entitlements. The pensioners came out in numbers causing vehicular gridlock at the Oba Oboramen Square. They are demanding payment of their entitlements, such as gratuity and harmonization of monthly pension. The report. They are also asking the state government to pay those screened in April 2017. According to them, yellow cards have been collected and local government pensioners who retired in 2017 are yet to receive their gratuities. We are putting a very you know, youthful years in serving this state, in particular Nigeria in general. It's a running of uh, faith that uh, we are not suffering at our old ages. For instance, some of our members who retired uh, in 1996, let me jump with that way, is what they have been getting since 1996, they are still getting it today. Those who retired in 2000, lucky retired. Compared to 2000, what they were getting 2000, what they are still getting today. It may, it, it may be surprised that we see a pension in real estate where they see 400 naira a month. I repeat, 400 naira a month. The pension bureau office is there for you to go and verify. We have pension in real estate where they see 2000 naira for more than 20, 30 years. Their pension money will be static. Nobody cares about that. Recall that the immediate past governor left here 2016. As not the very week he left, the state of assembly then walk out 200 million naira for Shomole, 100 naira for his deputy as pension. What are before then people have been, Baba be on, uh, be on ground, unattended to for many years ago. I retired 2000. That's 2000. I have been, I have been on the salary of 9,000 some hundred. Since that time to this today, even till tomorrow, even on the 30th, I receive a lot, the same amount of money. Nothing, nothing more than that. All these are the adjustments, nothing made. The governor graciously set up money that they should use in paying accumulation of local government pension areas. Pension areas means until you are placed on pension, the month that they didn't place you is the areas. The, the standard payment. 1982, they group us in batches, batch one, batch two, batch three, batch four, batch five, batch six, and put estimated of 300 and something thousand, 300 and something uh, million, 300 and something to be paid. Among all these badges, there's no one single badge that was cleared. Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shuaibu appealed to the protesters to be calm as a committee has been set up to look into their grievances and suggest a payment plan. The time frame will be determined by their committee. You know why I said the, the time frame will be determined by their committee? Because we, they need to go into those documents to check what they have. Then the chairman, your chairman or your executive, will go with HOS now. 
they will sit down and when they discuss, he will come back to give you feedback of the time frame. So please, he is the chairman. When they go back now, the chairman will give you feedback of the timelines because they will have to go back, sit with them, with the HOS committee, look at it. They will now give you the appropriate right time. And I can tell you it's not a long time. Issue of pensions are not issues we keep for long because of the sensitivity. So I want to please first apologize for you people to have come here to stay under the sun. Normalcy, however, returned as the angry pensioners left the road with the hope that the committee would get to work and provide solutions in no distant time. And fuel scarcity in Maidukuri is taking its toll on residents who face twin problems of power outages and high cost of fuel. Residents use fuel to power electricity generators as Maidukuri has been without public power supply for over 12 months now due to the destruction of facilities and major power lines by Boko Haram insurgents. The report. Many residents have been using petrol for their generating sets at home, offices and businesses since January 2021. The scarcity triggers fuel price hike from 165 Naira to 400 Naira per litre, worsening a bad situation with transport fares and the cost of goods and services going up. Commercial charging of mobile phones moved from 30 Naira to 50 Naira. School children, especially from poor background, are also suffering from the scarcity, as hike in transport fares prevent some of them from attending school. It's not easy, especially for women. We don't even have like it's up to uh, it's up so we are depend on the petrol alone. Okay. And for us to get to the rate of this today is a problem for us. We have to kill, don't kill before we get it. Then it's not easy for us as we business people because for us in the the, the price of, the, of our product is very hard. People are complaining, but there's no even money in circulation. Honestly, fuel price hike is affecting our business. Coming from home, you pay high transport fare, and the same applies here. Purchasing fuel for our generators is another thing. A litre will not take you anywhere. Although power supply has been restored in some parts of Maiduguri, but the distribution company in charge of electricity is still struggling to restore electricity supply in some parts of the city. And former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Charles Soludo took the oath of office alongside his deputy Onyeka Ibezim. In his inaugural speech, Soludo promised to hit the ground running, noting that some key members of his cabinet will be announced soon. Soludo, during the swearing-in ceremony, appreciated President Muhammadu Buhari for allowing the will of the Anambra people to prevail, stakeholders, his supporters, the police, and the people of Anambra State for their roles in his election last November. At the inauguration, the wife of outgoing governor of Anambra State, Ebele Chuku Obiano, and Bianca Ojuku got into a messy fight. And now to politics, where the newly elected chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Yochia Ayu, has stated that under his leadership, the party has resolved most of its internal crises, especially those regarding state chapters of the party. The chairman made this known during the party's National Working Committee meeting, which was held in its National Secretariat in Abuja. He added that the challenges aside the PDP is set to return to its winning ways. The report. The party chairman called on all aggrieved members of the party to sheath their swords and settle their differences internally. The fact that we made a mistake along the line and Nigeria lost confidence doesn't mean that that is impossible. It is still possible because 
With unity, everything is possible. I call on every member of this party to forget their differences. If there are differences, we must settle such differences in-house. No party member should attack another party member. Are you also added that the party will soon return to its winning ways as the majority of the issues in the party has been resolved? We are happy to say that since January, this NWC, which we put in place, has been able to resolve a lot of issues in our state chapters. We immediately had to address the issues of various elections. And I'm happy to say that in all those elections, with the cooperation of all our members, the party was able to return to its winning ways. Behind me is the National Secretariat of the People's Democratic Party and the venue of its National Executive Council meeting, as well as its Board of Trustees meeting, where it is expected that crucial issues regarding the party ahead of the 2023 general elections will be addressed. Now, surrounding me are supporters of various aspirants who are at the Secretariat to blow the trumpet of their preferred candidates, as well as a few who are clamoring for an end to the dispensation of elderly candidates to give way to young and vibrant Nigerians to take over the affairs of the country. This is the Take Back Nigeria movement and their call is for the PDP to nominate the best candidates to contest in the 2023 presidential election. They believe that candidate is Peter Obi, the former governor of Anambra State. After searching all the candidates in, P in PDP, we have identified Obi as that one. We need somebody that understands what it means to shut down the cost of governance. And that, everybody knows, is Obi's biggest strength. We are equally ready to challenge anybody who says their candidate is the best to come to the national TV and debate us. Just across is also the amalgamated Atiku support group, who are also insisting that the former vice president remains the solution to Nigeria's problems. When we talk about capacity, we talk about experience. Atiku has gone through the process. He has been in the ship. He rode the, the, the ship in before now as a vice president. And he came out. All right. So he has the experience, he has the finance, he has the crowd. I mean, the other candidates, well, good for them. Who we'll see at the ring. You know, it is not about the noise. It's about the finals. Retired Colonel Chinyere Obi is, however, of the opinion that the time has come for young Nigerians to take over the affairs of the country. We have suffered enough. The youth now are supposed to be what? Supposed to, vote, to come out. Let them go. I am 73, and Tudumpo is telling me that he's 60 something. So I'm the senior. Now if they have come out, they will now come and eat uh, popcorn for road. They will eat corn. But when they enter there, that is the end. They will never remember the young ones. It's not that way. Women are suffering. Look at them. One, one thousand, two, two thousand. They are standing because there's no food and they are hungry. Right? And when they vote on the when they enter, they will forget them. Why are they using black jeep every time? Because their heart is black. You people should fight for Nigeria. Nigeria is gone. Let the youth come out and fight for Nigeria. Saki Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Meanwhile, National Chairman, Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Maimala Buni of the APC, says activities initiated and executed under the Acting Chairman and Governor of Niger State, Abubakar Sani Bello, remain effective. He called on all stakeholders. The National Chairman stated this in a statement he personally signed and called on all stakeholders to support the move towards a successful convention of the party and disregard reports that his led executive suspended all arrangements made by the acting chairman. You're watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break, local rice millers take over production. This and more after the break. Do stay with us.
This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Hey, welcome back. You're still watching Trust TV News Update. Now look at our top stories. Joint security operatives have neutralized over 100 bandits and repelled attempted attack on a police division in Bangi, Mariga local government area of Niger State. And fuel scarcity in Maiduguri is taking its toll on residents who face a twin problem of power outages and high cost of fuel. Now moving on to other stories. Ahead of voting on the constitutional amendments by the State Houses of Assembly, Staff of local government councils, judiciary and parliaments in north-central geopolitical zone have asked state houses of assembly in the region to support the quest for autonomy. A rally to achieve this objective was held by, by Nigeria Labour Congress in Lafia, Nasarawa State. Abubakar Abdullahi attends the rally and now reports. Already done at the National Assembly and expected to be done at the 36 state houses of assembly the voting on the constitutional amendment, these workers from the local government councils, judiciary, and parliamentarian staff led by the Nigerian Labour Congress embark on this rally for a common demand, which is their autonomy, as contained in the ongoing constitutional amendment by the National Assembly. Having trekked for a distance along Shandam Road Lafia to the premises of Nasarawa State House of Assembly, Leaders of the Union ask members of the Nasarawa State House of Assembly to reflect on what the National Assembly did by voting in favor of autonomy of local government, judiciary, and parliamentarian staff when the document is presented before them. Similar events took place at the national level, and we had almost 100 percent vote in support of the autonomy of the legislature, judiciary, and the, the local government. Today we are here from the, before you to equally advocate for support from you. Mr. Speaker, this is your project because it affects you directly. The autonomy is one of the key ingredients of good governance. We want to have 100% vote. The federal government has to see their own money. The state governors have to see their own money. Why is local government not assessing their own money? It's a nice question. Thank you very much. What I want to say is that we are here to solicit your own support as a very reliable and competent assembly in Nasarawas. Yes, sir. The autonomy for which we are looking for is an autonomy that it is meant for yourself in the House of Assembly. It's an autonomy to have your freedom and your voice to be heard anyway. It's the freedom that will be given to you for you to manage your resources yourself. And that's why we will be given to the judiciary. We will be allowed, allowing them to, to give justices to do those who deserve it. And that of the local government is purely a demand for both administrative and financial autonomy at that level, so that we can genuinely get our salary as a twenty, get development at that level as a twenty. Receiving the North Central NLC members, Speaker of the National State House of Assembly said the proposal for the autonomy is long overdue and it should be considered done this time around, describing it as the State House of Assembly project. To be frank, the issue of uh, autonomy of the local government is long, I would say, is long overdue. Right. Good. And this is the right time to have it done. For the National Science Assembly, I can confidently tell you to go home and sleep. The issue of autonomy of judiciary and the legislature in the states, just as I told the Labour chairman the last time he visited me, I consider it as a concluded issue. Wow. Because this is a constitutional issue, and it has already been captured in the fourth iteration, and Mr. President has assented to it. Good. So I will say confidently that nobody, nobody 
can change the autonomy of the judiciary. He called on NLC to continue pursuing in order to ensure implementation if finally amended. What remains for us is to struggle for the implementation of the autonomy of the judiciary and the legislature and to very proud, very soon, soonest, we shall commence the implementation of the autonomy of the legislature and the judiciary. The speaker further called on NLC to continue pursuing their course to ensure implementation of the autonomy if finally accepted by the legislature. In attendance of the rally were NLC members from the states of Benue, Kogi, Plateau, Niger, Kwara, Host Nasarawa, and Federal Capital Territory. Abubakar Abdullahi, Trust TV News, Lafia. Now, rice farming employs many people in Kura local government area of Kano State. Roadside markets attract rice merchants and consumers from all over the country on a daily basis. In this two-part series of Trust TV's special coverage on Kura, correspondent Idris Jibrin reports on how local processing of rice in Kura engages residents and provides them with what they eat and sell. Let's take a look. For the people in Kura local government area of Kano State, Rice farming across all year round is not only a pride, but their way of life, and by extension, their largest means of livelihood. Rice farming in Kura became vibrant long ago when we got 22,000 hectares of irrigation during which water canals were extended up to our respected farms. Throughout the year, the people of Kura are always busy, be it at the farms for cultivation, local factory for processing, or at these roadside markets to sell. We used to come here to do our business in order to help our parents, relatives, among others. Most believe that Kura depends on rice farming. Therefore, despite the water blockage this year, many people are still benefiting from this market. Although today is not the usual Friday's weekly market day in Kura, with little or no difference, this market is the largest trading center here, and the rice is equally locally produced here. This market contributes a lot of uh, bringing so much jobs for the for the growth, that is for the new growth and uh, use. And uh, actually, we have developed enough because people from the various villages they used to come bring the the rice to this area and sell it, and because of that. Uh, being that uh, it will help the, 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 the peoples to, to have the, so much job at the area. Jamil Usani runs a local rice processing mill with two machines and few help. This young man is managing to keep body and souls together. Every day I used to process 100 bags of rice paddy to produce 50 bags of rice. At times, we can sell all of it in this market. The problem of electricity supply, inadequate local processing machineries, and high cost of transportation are few amongst the major challenges threatening the rice farmers and local processors in Kura. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. Now look at the foreign scene where at least four people are reported dead and more than 100 injured in Japan on Thursday after a powerful overnight earthquake rattled large parts of the east coast and prompted a tsunami warning. The 7.4 magnitude quake off the coast of Fukushima derailed a bullet train, opened cracks in highways and threw products from shelves in shops. A tsunami warning for waves of up to a meter in parts of the northeast Japan was lifted in the early hours of Thursday after authorities recorded water levels up to 30 centimeters higher than usual in some areas. 
Multiple smaller jolts continued to hit the region into Thursday morning, straining nerves just days after Japan marked the 11th anniversary of the massive quake, tsunami and nuclear disaster in the area. Authorities say damage is comparatively minor in a country with tough building codes intended to protect against devastation from frequent earthquakes. An official said there were no abnormalities at nuclear plants. And that concludes Trust TV News Update for this hour. Don't forget you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.